It's just incredible to see when you start from just a simple concept and you see it go from, you know, my notes on a piece of paper, something so small, to three million tickets. We start working on concept art about two or three months before a launch date. So it went from this idea to this. And these are original notes that I've sent to our vendor, Scientific Games, telling them exactly what we want the ticket to look like. The statement that our job is to create instant tickets uh, where every single player has a fair chance to win a prize seems simple on the surface, but there's a lot of people working to make sure that statement is true. Our goal is to ensure that every player has a fair chance to win a prize. And in order for us to reach that goal, um, we have systems, security systems, and we have people, and we have auditors that ensure that the data is absolutely confidential from the moment it is put on the ticket to the moment it's actually scratched by the player. There's a huge transformation uh, in, in the, the life of the ticket. Uh, obviously, it starts out as a concept, it starts out as an idea, and then it becomes real work. We have about 25 full-time artists, and they create the artwork that becomes an instant ticket. And it came back as vinyl art, which was delivered today, and this is what it looked like. The lottery has specified to us uh, the prize fund, the number of prizes in the game. Uh, the lottery has specified to us the odds in the game. Once the whole ticket's gone through its creation process at Scientific Games, it comes back as a set of working papers. The document is signed by the lottery, so work can begin in this plant. This is the printing uh, piece that Scientific Games sends right before it goes on press, and then we have to approve this. So we're not only checking for the art, the colors, everything is in the right place. It's got proper grammar and punctuation, but it's got the proper odds. All the information on the back is correct. Once this is approved, it's ready to, it's ready to start printing at Scientific Games. Uh, we can begin to do the manufacturing preliminary work that needs to be done to run a press, as well as, and um, as important, uh, create the software uh, that is going to generate the data that makes the game. So the game has now come from an idea, it's, now it's become software, and then that software ultimately is used in a secured environment to produce instant ticket data. Really the instant ticket, um, it's just giving the data a ride. It's just giving the data a ride, a secure ride, uh, to the player. These servers are used to on the one hand, develop the software, uh, and on the other hand, actually produce the data. The most important thing about this room uh, is that it's secure. There's really no place in this building, except the bathrooms, uh, that you can move around without having your picture taken. We're audited uh, by security folks all the time. We're audited by Deloitte and & Touche and other internal auditors. We're subject to uh, extensive annual background checks, especially in game programming in my department. Um, all, of the, all of these processes are designed to make sure that that data on that ticket that's given a ride to the player, uh, that data is secure. Uh, as we program the game, we program it in pools of data. The value of any one section of a pool is roughly equivalent to the value of any other section. Hence, a fair chance to win a prize for every player. The game is completely random. Uh, when we produce the data, uh, it's produced by algorithms that produce a mixture uh, that's unbiased and unpredictable. When we have completed the software, we're going to produce an encrypted file. And in that encrypted file is going to be information that's going to direct an imaging system. This plate uh, is, is really where the rubber meets the road. Uh, it's where you're going to take the logical data that's been produced and encrypted from the game programming side uh, and this is the interface this is where we put put ink on paper our software drives a very complicated very expensive 
high-speed inkjet printer. And as tickets roll through the press, at some point in time, we're going to impress on that paper this variable data. It's encrypted the moment it's born, and right before it goes on the paper, it is decrypted, and then it's covered up by scratch-off coding. So you can really see uh, the instant ticket as a piece of paper, uh, and then coding after coding after coding from the security side, data, and then coding and coding and coding on top for security on top. So there's carbon on, on the top as well, carbon on the bottom, uh, both to prevent a flashlight from actually seeing the data. You can view it as, as a sandwich in some ways, where you've got bread and bread, and the, really the meat, the real piece of important information is that data that we create with the software. Our job at Scientific Games is to make sure we protect that data such that when it's covered up, the only way uh, that it can be revealed is to purchase the ticket and then scratch the ticket off. But as that press progresses through the job, we want to ensure that every single ticket looks the same, that the artwork, the colors, the, the, the perforation, the, the characteristic, the physical characteristics of the ticket remain the same throughout the job. And in order to do that and convince ourselves of that, um, various points throughout the process, throughout the printing process, yes, we're going to take samples. We have a QA department, and they're 24 by 7, 365 days a year, and it's their job as we, as we, take, as we take samples throughout the game uh, to identify ranges of packs that may have a problem. And we're going to subject those samples to a variety of tests. Do they tear too easily, for example? Uh, do they scratch too easily? Do they scratch too hard? You are in ticket security. We're going to make sure that we do all the tests in this department and we know that when our tickets leave this facility that they can't be compromised with normal household items that could compromise the ticket. This is what we call the Baca steam test. We're going to soak the paper in the Baca. We take our iron and we set it here. Now once the 10 minutes is up, we'll take the ticket, we'll check the paper. You want to look at the ticket to make sure that the numbers aren't coming up through the coding and you want to make sure that the imaging for the numbers are not coming up on this paper. When your ticket leaves Scientific Games, we know if it can be compromised in the field that we can show tamper evidence. On the packaging line, uh, we have systems uh, and people also uh, who are inspecting the tickets. Once again, another level of check, another check and balance, to make sure that what we started with in this document is exactly what our customer is going to get. We have controls and processes to make sure that the exact prize structure originally conceived by the lottery is maintained as we package those tickets and put them in these bricks or these packages that ultimately are sold to the players. We have an enormous dock where it's a constant activity, uh, trucks coming in, delivering raw materials to us, and trucks leaving the building uh, with the finished product to our customers. First thing that happens is the trucks are secured. Uh, there's physical security measures uh, to ensure that the moment the truck leaves our property, um, it, the doors are locked and it's sealed with our seal. Uh, that seal uh, will then ultimately be broken once it's received at the warehouse uh, in Columbia, South Carolina. Now, it is important to note that the value of the ticket that is on the truck is really zero. Until that product is activated, um, it's really not worth anything and cannot be redeemed for any, for any money. When we get ready to launch this game out, you have to pull the pallets in numerical order, okay? So what happened, every time we run through, we process a whole pallet and we need the next pallet. He's gonna come here and check and make see verify which pallet was the last one that we sent out and to, to, to make sure that we're pulling them in order. You know, it's just a lot of checks and balances. But approximately 3,500 orders are gonna be processed to ship out on Monday of next week for delivery to the agent on Tuesday of next week. Uh, the, 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 the ticket has gone through various stages in its life. Uh, concept, uh, manufacturing, pre-press, shipping, packaging. It's gone through these stages. Um, but when it arrives at the retail location, once again, it has no value. Right now I'm receiving an order. It comes in a bag with your recent tickets. To activate them, you'd actually have to scan the barcode. 
And the activation is, is, is a process that occurs by a retailer that indicates to the system that this pack now has some value. This is real money now. This is three hundred dollars worth of money. All these bins, they have lips on the inside of them, so you can display the ticket nice and pretty, so the customer can see it properly. Let me get a one more twenty-nine and two number nines. All right, fifteen is your change. Thank you, and have a good day. Thank good luck. You. The purchase of an instant ticket is a random event. Uh, and the data uh, that we have put on that ticket is unbiased and unpredictable. Yeah, we do like to see that players have a positive experience and they get excitement out of it and they have fun playing with, you know, playing with what you've created. It's just incredible to see how it starts from something so small to three million tickets and all those positive experiences that come out of that one concept. Not only do we have winners, but we're transferring money to education.